Hey, hello, and welcome back. And that's right, it's been two years since QNAP launched this, the TS464 NAS. If not one of the most popular NASs they've ever launched, I would argue it's got to be up there in the top three. This melding a lovely fine middle ground between hardware efficiency and decent cost value for money, this solution from them still ranks among one of the most popular NAS devices I've ever talked about here on the channel. And in this video, we're going to be revisiting this device. Two years since its launch, I've had this be utilized uh, probably in about 100 to 150 different videos. And we're going to talk about right now whether it still deserves your money and your data. We're going to talk about the things about it that I would argue have aged well, like a fine wine. But I'm also going to talk about the things that haven't, that have aged poorly like an out-of-date gummy bear. So, let's crack on straight away with number one. In terms of physical build and hardware efficiency, QNAP really hit the mark so well on this system. Rocking out with an incredibly compact physical chassis, therefore a small imprint in your physical environment, your desk space, your whatever. The system then doubled down on this by arriving with a very lovely floating point between hardware efficiency with the Intel uh, N5105 or N5095 processor, a Celeron quad core, alongside of which arriving with 4 to 8 gig of DD are for memory more on that later on but alongside that the system in its small stature was still able to accommodate four hard drive bays inside a large amount of ports and functionality that we'll touch on more later on alongside more featured storage that could be added even more to those four bays of storage inside and all of this with the power efficiency for its stature that was pretty impressive. I'm not going to say it was the lowest power device in the market, but it's certainly very, very efficient with a wonderful CPU that sits somewhere at the 10 to 15 watt TDP. And on top of that, noise winning operation wasn't too bad either. What I'm saying is in terms of impact on your overall home or business environment, the 464 even now in 2024 still makes a tremendously confident first step there. That's right, this thing is expandable as F. Notwithstanding, as mentioned, the four drives of storage there on the front, inside there, we've also got a couple of M2 NVMe bays inside that allow us to add two SSDs on Gen 3 times one slot to a thousand megs each. And then you look at the rear of the device and you've got yourself a PCIe upgrade slot, a plate of which I've completely lost the cover for that. But that PCIe slot, it allows you to add one and two port 10 GPU cards. It allows you to add M2 NVMe upgrade cards and 10 GPU cards. You can add so much stuff to that. You can even add Wi-Fi upgrade cards there. Add to that the system arriving with further USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gig ports that can be used for two, four, and six and eight bay expansion devices. There's even an expansion with a PCIe card to improve things even further. And with those M2 NVMe's inside, not only for storage, but also utilized for AI applications, uh, utilized in, say, Google's TPU card, the expandability of the 464, even two years after release, is mwah, tree bar. Next one, real quick, I would argue a significant percentage of users that went for the TS-464 and will probably continue to do so in 2024 and onwards. This thing is great for Plex. When it comes to Plex, this can, thanks to that hardware transcoding internally and that nice power efficiency floating point there, although it's not going to, you know, hammer 8K that easily, I would say with 4K, the potential to perform multiple 4K operations on this are very, very good for that $550 to $600 price tag there. Yes, there are more powerful systems out there, but for comparative to the price and the power efficiency and set up and forget nature of Plex on this, it is a great choice for those looking for a confident entry into a Plex media server that they want to set up and then forget about for years to come. And lastly, I'll say right now, two years after its release, one of the things that wasn't really that much of a big deal when it rocked out the gate that I would argue two years later has become increasingly important is to do with compatibility. This system, if you want to use WD Reds and Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives, you can use them. That's not unusual. Most brands let you. But the compatibility listings on this and the supported compatibility lists on the QNAP TS464 are massive. If you want to use 
Ultra Star Enterprise drives? You can. If you want to use Toshiba drives, you can. If you want to use Samsung SSDs, if you want to use M2 NVMEs for storage pools, for caching, for Q-tier, you can do all of that on this from any brand you like. The compatibility listings are massive. And as we see moves by other brands out there to slowly smooth out and reduce the list of compatible storage media drives on their systems, arguably in favor of first party alternatives so they can, you know, capitalize and make their systems even more efficient and focused but to nonetheless be annoying for some it is a breath of fresh air in 2024 that this system still continues and further releases from QNAP in that time have continued the trend of wider support of third-party storage hard drives and SSDs and it is an enormous tick in the box of like for this system to allow me to do that <laughs> But it is not all sweetness and cream. Let's talk about those bad gummy bears I mentioned earlier on. I'll say right now, but this thing, it is a bit of a potluck when you are buying it online at the moment due to the fixed memory. We talked about this in videos about a year, year and a bit ago, that a lot of solutions due to hardware shortages, post-pandemic production problems, and the shortage of um, semiconductors in the world, uh, semiconductor production, I should say, and a lot of the raw materials and refineries in that process. The result was a lot of NAS brands, KINAP included, started moving towards fixed memory on their systems. It allowed them to provide more memory and fixing it directly to the board for reasons of cost efficiency and power efficiency as well, one might argue. But the result was that a lot of um, the TS-464 that were uh, uh, manufactured and produced and available for purchase in the last year, year and a half, have got fixed memory inside. I've talked to a few people on the support network here at NASCompares that have purchased this device and they've bought it because it had 8 gig of memory out the gate and they based it on a review that I made two years ago which had a system, this one indeed, that has a uh, sodium memory upgrade slot inside that allows you to add more or memory as you can see from that slot inside unfortunately newer releases in this product series and the two four and there's the six bay as well unfortunately now all arrive with fixed memory inside so you get more memory on day one but you don't get um the ability to add or even decrease that memory so you end up paying for memory you may not even need it's not a complete deal breaker but it has to be said the ability to not upgrade that memory will be a pain in the bum <laughs> Next up, I mentioned this in the original QTS 5 uh, software review with this and QTS 5 and QTS 5.1 reviews since then. The software does still have inconsistencies as far as I'm concerned. Majority of them in design wise, where the layout and the text and the fonts don't always match sometimes, but also the software just always feels like it's still trying to do too much, or it could just stand sometimes to go, please wait while we perform these actions. It lets you do too much sometimes, and sometimes the memory just seems to just disappear like that as it's trying to do too many ops at once it's software is still not as good as it can be and that inconsistency can often put people off particularly when they move away from platforms like Synology and DSM which always seem to be um, you know a controlled environment but ultimately a controlled environment with which feels a great deal more stable in day-to-day -day operations and QTS still has that inconsistency vibe to it you can get moved past it with a little bit of patience and definitely prepared to put the extra time in but I'm not going to say it's not still there two years on Let's be honest, two years is a long time in technology, and although the CPU inside this device when we got it, that M5105 or M5095, depending on which revision you got, it has to be said that hardware in terms of CPU, and particularly by Intel, has moved on considerably. Intel have ditched the Pentium and Celeron naming conventions for the most part, and other CPUs in this product family and alternatives for mobile SOC processors have arrived. The N100, the N95, the N305 um, i3 8-core processor, to the N6005 as well. All of these are CPUs that have been rocked out the gate for third-party NAS use and those integrated top 10 and CWWK boards that we talked about on the channel before have all started arriving. Consequently, the hardware that you are getting for the money inside this, it has to be said at 550 to 600 nicker, as good as the CPU architecture in this, it has changed a lot in the last two years and there are better, more power efficient options out there if you're prepared to go DIY. <laughs> And finally, you knew I was going to talk about it, security. I think it has to be said that there is still a whiff for a lot of users floating around that 
QNAP is still associated with us being a somewhat unsecure platform compared with the many other brands out there. And it has to be said, a lot of that is based on vibe than fact, but the facts are there. Um, now, if you go back and you look at the security advisory from QNAP, you will find the vulnerabilities within software platforms based on the Linux kernels are there. But that's not unusual to just QNAP. Other brands have that from Synology to Terramaster to Acer Store, all the way through to Unraid and TrueNAS. They all have vulnerabilities that can be found patched and you're expected to update your systems but nonetheless it always seems to feel keyword there feel very hard to actually substantiate in most regards that the QNAP platform feels less secure and unfortunately when we do see more recurring news posts about this appearing on reputable you know your tech radars um, your bleeping computer and the like appearing online unfortunately it does kind of underline that feeling as well now things have changed in those two years it has to be said QNAP have rolled out their bounty carrot program their PSIRT um, organ um, security uh, teams there in the background have nailed things a lot more than they have in the past they actually took down um, a quite substantial uh, ransomware ring uh, in the later stages of 2023 as well on top of that the software has improved upon that with admin credentials being turned off and a lot of the actions that a user can make to make their system insecure being guarded up the front by saying are you absolutely sure you want to do this and advising them just how insecure those moves can be and then on top of that with the admin panel being turned off uh, in the background of that updates and the way updates for apps and the os have been integrated better and presented better as well into the system allowing you to be a lot more informed and uh, about the updates that your system may require nevertheless i think it would be remiss not to at least highlight that the brand still has something of a reputation left to shake off in terms of uh, vulnerabilities and its security there. It's easy to navigate. It is definitely something that most users can solidify their systems, you know, into a robust fashion. But still, when it comes to all of the NAS brands, I think it would be remiss not to at least highlight that, unfortunately, QNAP is still shaking off that vibe. And there you go, that is the TS-464, two years on. Do I love it? Yes. Do I still use it? Yes. Is it going to be in more videos? Of course it is. I think this system, I can't see QNAP upgrading this in the near future. Normally they have a two-year refresh cycle, and I think there are going to be users watching this video because they want to know whether this system is going to be upgraded. And then the honest answer is... I'm not convinced they will upgrade it. Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I thought mm, the usual two, two and a half year refresh cycle, we'd see this device getting refreshed, but I'm seeing nothing on my radar about that and nothing to indicate that's the case. And normally by now, I'd get some early inklings and unfortunately, I'm getting nothing. So for now, I'd say the TS-464 isn't going anywhere, at least for the next year to two in terms of refresh cycle. And if you're on the fence or wondering about whether to buy yourself a QNAP NAS that ticks a lot of boxes while remaining power efficient, this is still one of, if not the best option out there. Thank you so much for watching. There'll be links below to other guides and more we've done on this system. If you've got further questions, do let me know in the comments or contact me directly via my email, Robbie at NAS Compares, or use a number of the different contact information below. Finally, if you need further support on your system or just a helping hand, you can use our free advice section over on NAS Compares, use the ask.nascompares uh, forum, use our Discord, or go to Ko-Fi and Patreon where you can arrange Zoom consultation sessions and just reach out to us directly. But apart from that, have yourselves a fantastic week.